But what I want to let you know is uh, an, attorneys may not know how well their clients do after a bankruptcy. Because in the ideal situation, if we file bankruptcy for someone, that is to help them alleviate debt. And our bankruptcy law basically says in the, in the statute, it is to give someone a fresh start, to start over financially. So in the best or ideal situations, we may never hear, in fact, I guess the clients hope they never have to speak to us again. They go through a successful bankruptcy process. They have eliminated some debt, generally a, a good bit of debt. They have learned some valuable life lessons along the way, and they have started focusing on the future. They have that fresh start, so they've started focusing on what uh, to do in the future, and things are better, and things hopefully continue to be better. Uh, as Judge Burris has already said, most of the people that file bankruptcy, I have to admit, I'm in a small town practice in Eastland, but I have to admit that what I see very seldom includes someone, someone who is wasteful or frivolous or uh, just spending money for useless things. What we generally see will be someone who has had a layoff on their job, and that is, has been so frequent in the last 10 years especially. Uh, they've been laid off, and their income might go down 50% or 100%. Uh, health issues. That can be the individual, the, the breadwinner. That can be the spouse. And their income has gone down dramatically because of health issues. And obviously, there'll be a, a corresponding increase in expenses because of the health issues. Uh, divorce creates financial hardship for at least two households at that point. It used to be one household, and you've got two households that have financial hardship. And that's the downside. The absolute best reason, in my opinion, that you might need to have to consider filing bankruptcy because of expenses is a baby comes along. A lot of people run into additional expenses and reduced income because babies have come along. That's a great reason, and people wouldn't change it, but anything that reduces a household income or increases expenses, and most often it does both, will create a need for people to file bankruptcy. And uh, that's what the bankruptcy statutes are there for, is to help those people. In a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, they eliminate debt uh, and conclude in four to six months. In a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, that is a debt reorganization plan uh, for households, very similar to reorganization plans for corporations. And again, Judge Bur Burris is uh, familiar with a lot of huge ones uh, in her court. Uh, like Bilo and other large corporations. In the end, what we always hope for and what the clients always hope for is that they do get this, this fresh start. I've been practicing bankruptcy law for a long, long time. Sad to say before most of you were born probably, but early on in my career, and it kind of reinforced what, what we were doing, is the lady that I remember to this day, uh, came in and talked about bankruptcy. She was on Social Security retirement. She was over 65. Her husband was drawing Social Security disability, and he died. Her household income was essentially cut in half. Uh, unfortunately for them, at that age, they were still making a substantial mortgage payment on their home. And the fact of the matter is, when your income goes down or your bills go up, uh, you still have to keep paying. She did not have the ability to do that, but this lady, it impacted her such that after her husband died and she was dealing with the stress of bills and creditors calling, uh, she started seeing her husband walking through the house, even though he had died six months earlier. Uh, she had a lot of stress and strain. She came in, we were able to file a bankruptcy. It was basically a simple bankruptcy that eliminated her debt, allowed her to focus her what money she had on her house payment. Uh, she did not have those sightings anymore after that. And the benefit to us in my office was just very simply, uh, again, I'm in a small town. Every time I would see this lady, she would come up and hug me. <coughs> she paid me with hugs because it helped her out tremendously. So that's what bankruptcy can be all about. Uh, one more thing, just because I'm standing doesn't mean I get to talk all night, so I'm going to stop in <laughs> a second and let these folks talk. But, uh, 
we've probably gotten your attention with a lot of kind of dark, uh, serious talk. And it is serious. Financial issues are serious. Dealing with student loans, student debts, any type of debts is a very serious thing. But don't leave here tonight thinking that's all there is to think about or all there is to talk about in this area. The same thing that people learn through bankruptcy, managing their money better, focusing on the debt, getting a fresh start and looking toward the positive future are the things like Susie has mentioned earlier that you can start doing now. You focus on all of those things uh, and prepare for the future. Had a lot of these people been able to look ahead, set aside funds, set aside money, watch what they spent, they would be prepared for the unexpected. Uh, uh, when you're in college, I'm satisfied there are unexpected things that happen all the time. You can't know when they're going to happen, but you know to expect the unexpected, whether it's uh, quizzes, uh, whether it's snow days and you can't get to class, you prepare for the unexpected the unexpected best you can, and it will ward off these things. So it's not all of gloom and doom, it is preparation and looking forward so that uh, you know, the good news and the bad news is you're going to graduate from here. Good news is you're graduating. Bad news is you're not here anymore. You're on your own. Be prepared for it just by, by thinking about these things ahead of time. So they're good things to look forward to. Thank you, David. Robert, okay. we got about five minutes for the two of us. All right. Um, <laughs> a question. How many of you have a, own a car? How many of you know where the papers are on that car when you bought it? Okay, because that's important because if anything ever happens with that car, if you quit making the payments, or can't make the payments, it gets repossessed, or if anything happens where you have an issue about that car, you need to be able to put your hands on the papers that are in that car. How many of the papers in that, about that car, the loan papers, are in the car? I mean, you got them in the car. Well, that's good because if something happens to your car, I had that happen to clients. I say, well, you know, the car was repossessed, the car was stolen, or something, and the car was destroyed. Well, where are the papers that were in the car? Or they say, you know, um, my loan company is saying I, I'm not making the right payment. I say, well, what kind, what's the amount of payment you're supposed to make? Well, I say, well, um, they say, can I see the original documents you signed? What, what did you promise to do? They don't have those papers. So if you ever sign a document, where you promise to pay somebody money. Until you pay off that money, you keep that piece of paper close to you where you can find it. If they ever claim something or if you ever you need to claim something. And once you pay off the money, you make a copy of whatever it is that proves you pay off the money and keep it. Don't keep it in a computer. Keep it where you physically can put your hands on it. Because we had something in our office happen one day in the last two weeks, but we had a problem with uh, computers and some documents. Luckily, we had backups. But I've had situations where people have been sued, come to me and say, they say they owe me an hour of money. I said, and I, and I paid them. I said, well, where's your proof? I don't have any proof. Well, the company has proof that you owe the money. And if you don't have proof that you paid them, then guess what? You may have to pay them again. So if you ever borrow money from anybody, sign your name to it keep that paper until you look no longer owe the money and if you ever pay it off keep some kind of piece of paper proving that you pay it off because you might need it someday in the future and the other thing that i would want to say was um it follows up on this what they talked about i always tell clients when they come in to see me about bankruptcy before before you even think about bankruptcy or before you think about your Follow of figuring out how to solve your debts. You got to know two things. You got to know how much you make and how much your expenses are. And until you know those two things, you really can't do anything to solve any problems you got. So, like, you need to start now, knowing where your income is, how much you make, and and what you spend your money on. And if you don't know when you go home tonight. If you don't really can't sit there in your head and think, all right, I know where I'm spending my money and I know how much I got left over every month or every week or however it comes. If you don't know that, 
You may end up in my office a few years from now. 